Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and this is a video for Chapter 14 of the book Quantitative Social Science Data with R, Second Edition. And in this video, what we're going to do is look at uh, calculating predicted counts of our negative binomial regression model. So this is one way to interpret the negative binomial regression coefficients. There is a... Um, there's another way which we're actually not going to look at called expected counts, which we calculate them and interpret them in a very similar way to odds ratio. And what I found is that they don't really make the effects as clear um, as predicted counts do. So there's been times where I've used expected counts where it's like expected to increase by blank percent, something like that. And what people want to know is like, what is what is the actual count? Like, what is the predicted amount of whatever it is? Uh, here it's articles, uh, you know, um, sorry, article citations, but it could be publications. It could be, I don't know, crimes or whatever it is. Uh, people want to know the actual numbers. So we are going to use uh, predicted counts. How we calculate them and how we look at them is very similar to what we did with predicted probabilities, except here's predicted counts. So we're going to take a quick look at, at calculating them uh, here, which it, you'll see is, it's, again, it's similar to kind of like individual predicted probabilities. So we're going to do that here, and then we're also going to do a plot of the predicted counts. Okay, so we are going to use the same setup that we've used before for predictive probabilities. We're using the package ggfx. So let's load that. And then we are using the ggpredict function. All right, so we have our model, model.nbrm. And then we're just going to look at um, tweet dumb because that's the only uh, statistically significant predictor. Now, if we had a bunch of predictors, you know, you'll see how this shakes out. Um, we might want to create like a table with minimum and maximum predicted counts um, corresponding to minimum maximum of the predictor's values. Um, th I don't know. Th there's different options we can we can use but let's let's just take a look here all right all right so this should be terms not term that would have caused a problem okay so we run that and we see the sort of main thing here so tweet dumb zero means article wasn't tweeted one means it was tweeted so um for articles that were tweeted the predicted number of article citations is 5.34. For articles that were not tweeted, the predicted number of article citations was 2.3. So that's roughly a three um, citation difference. Now, one thing to point out is that down here we see adjusted for and, and our other two variables, um, these are set at their means. So as dummy variables, we really shouldn't use it. There's, there's, some, there, there's some debate that gets kind of like a bit wonky about whether 0, 1 dummy variables could be treated um, as um, interval ratio level kind of variables. Um, we're just going to ignore it. <laughs> we're just going to say, all right, they're nominal. That's what we're considering them. So if we wanted to be, you know, a little more honest with our predictions, given that they are nominal, what we can do is set the condition in here. Um, again, this is like the individual predicted probabilities. So we're going to add the option condition equals, and then the C function for concatenate. We're going to do women, woman lead author equals zero and full prof equals zero. So those are the modes of those two variables. Um, 
which is common to do if we don't want to set a variable at its mean, we can set it at its mode. Um, or or even want to, but should or should not. We can set it at its mode. Okay, so let's uh, let's run that. All right, so we see, you know, essentially the same results, right? It's just that it's a little, the predictive values are a little smaller. So f for an article that was tweeted, the predicted number of article citations is 4.89. And for articles that were not tweeted, the predicted number of article citations is 2.1. So the gap is slightly smaller, but, you know, it's like at the end of the day, it's roughly the same. Okay, so that is it for this video. The next one, we're going to look at plotting uh, predicted counts. So thank you for watching. See you next time.